Okay, so in the last video, we, in the last couple of videos, we've uh, made a window, we've been able to close the window, and we've drawn a background to the window. In this video, we will be changing the color of the background of the window, uh, the color actually behind the background image. So that image that we, that we drew to the background before, you can see here, um, it's not actually a black image. What it is is this image has transparency. So we're seeing the black renderer behind the image. Now, in this video, we're going to be changing the color of the render so that the actual background, everything that's not the SDL part and the, and the colors uh, in, the, in this uh, shape here are going to all change colors. Okay, so like the other videos, if you are just starting with this video, you can go and clone the repository. This is going to be the fourth video, so we're just going to carry on from the code that was in the third video. So clone the repository, we're going to be in the CSDL part, and we're going to be carrying on from this O3 background source code. Okay. So, so this is going to be pretty simple to change the color. All we really need to do is use a function that is called set render draw color, and that is going to change that uh, black background that we saw in the render. Let me show it real quick over here. So as we're going through our loop, we keep clearing the render, and then we're drawing our image on the screen, and then we're presenting the render. And we're doing this. 60 times a second. So every time this clear render happens, this is actually drawing a black render, and we're going to change that color. So that's what this function is doing here. This is going to set that color. So when it does clear it the next time, it's going to actually be whatever new color that we set it. So this is a pretty simple function. Um, we're returning zero on success, but we're not even, we're not kind of check the um, the error status of this function. So we're not going to worry about the int that's coming back out of here. And we are going to be pulling in the render. And then we're going to have an RGB alpha. You know, we have a red channel, a green channel, a blue channel, and an alpha channel. The alpha channel is setting transparency. So we don't need the render to be transparent. So we are not going to be changing the value of the alpha channel. We're going to leave that set full. And all the, the numbers on all these channels go between 0 and 255. So that is going to be locked at 255. And then we're going to be changing these other colors to random numbers. And so before we get into actually setting up this function, we got to think about how we're going to get random numbers. So in uh, C, the way that we get random numbers is with rand, which uh, is part of the std lib. And this is going to give us um, two things that we need. We need rand, which is going to give us our pseudo random number. And then we're, we need srand, which is going to seed that number, or seed, seed the random number generator. So the, we're first going to seed it so that we have um, we're not always starting with the same random number because I'm um, not sure if you if you know how random number generators work. What they do is they use some complicated math and they're going to give you a sequence of numbers. But if you don't seed it with a random number, it's going to give you that same sequence every time. So imagine the sequence was something like pi, like a 3.14, you know, and it carries on. Um, if we seed it, we can say, hey, don't start at 3. How about start at 4 and then carry on from there? So the seed is basically saying we're going to start. We're still using the same number generator, but we're starting somewhere a, somewhere at a different spot along those numbers. So we're going to use srand to seed the number generator, and then we're going to use rand to actually get our random number that we want. Now, to seed it, we're actually going to use time. So we're going to go over here. And um, time just gives you back the system time. And we don't need to actually store it or anything. We just want to use just time by itself, no. And we want to see um, SRAND. And there might be an example here somewhere. Um, is there an example? 
there's not an example in this one. But we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take SRAND right here. And this, this seed number here, we're actually going to stick a function inside of here, which is just time, which is going to give us the time. So we're seeding SRAND with whatever time it is. And that's going to give us our first random, you know, that's going to give us our seed. So whenever we call random, we're going to be starting at a different part. If we don't do this SRAND part, our random number generator, it's going to seem random, but it's always going to give us the same. It's always going to start at the same place. So if it was 314, every time we played the game, we'd get the first number to be 3, the second number would be 1, the, you know. And we'd get random numbers, all the way seemingly random numbers, but we'd always start at the same. So it'd be, it wouldn't seem that random. So what we do with this S random is we need to start at some place along there. What we're going to do is we're going to use time to make uh, start make that starting point somewhere along there based on what time it is. I'm not really sure if that was a good explanation, but it's very common in uh, if we just need for games, if we just need a random number, this kind of deal like, um, let's see here, if we go S rand, oops, time null, yeah, this is a very common um, thing that's uh, used. There we go, S rand time null. So it's just, it's just saying, hey, we just want our random number generator to be seeded with some seemingly random number, which is actually coming from the time. Okay, so that's pretty simple. So we're going to do this srand. We're going to do that right in the initialization code. So in the initialization... Just double check, make sure I'm doing this correctly. Yeah, yeah, it's just basic. We're also gonna um, cast this number. Uh, I, I'm not sure if. Um, let's see. I'll I'll just try it real quick. I'm not sure if the reason why we're casting it is because I use quite strict um, compiler rules sometimes. So that's our S rand. Now this is just literally gonna seed it, but then we're gonna put in here time okay so this is saying hey take whatever time it is and use that as our seed for random now this may work now we, we're going to need to import two two things for this to work we're going to need time is from time.h and srand is from um, std lib so we have time.h here for time, and for, these are part of the, the C language, but they're, you know, um, this is part of the standard lib, standard lib and um, time. So we will need to add those up here. So, m.h and include and that should be okay for those so we won't get an error now like i said i generally use pretty strict compiler we're not we're not using them now we're just using gcc we're not really doing every all the warnings and stuff so this is probably why i've been casting it we'll, we'll try this real quick i don't i think this will work just fine but normally i cast this uh, yeah this is just fine um and something we forgot to do real quick or i, I forgot to do was um, actually change this from background to colors. So I actually need, I'm just going to copy this file again, paste it, and I'm going to call it colors. Okay, zero four colors. And we're going to go in there. I'll go back here and I'll just undo
Okay. So we're on colors and we'll change this title. Okay. So we have our um, standard lib and time pulled in. We are seeding it down here. And like I said, I think it's good practice to cast this to unsign. I actually have it cast to um, uint32, which is a SDL specific SDL, but uh, we can just put it unsigned here. We'll probably be just fine. So what this is doing is this is taking time and it's casting it. Time is, I think, um, type T. Let's see here. Yeah, um, time T, sorry. Time T. And we did, but but um, S Rand it needs to take an unsigned. So if we go over here to S Rand and look at its signature, it needs an unsigned. So I'm just going to cast time. If you're just using uh, GCC, it's not going to complain. But if you have more strict uh, compiler options, um, it, it's better to cast it. So that is all that needs to be done for setting that up. So now we just need our random numbers and to change the, the background. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this so it happens when we press the space bar. So we already have, we already, we, we've already have it set up to check if a key is down and we have to set up if a escape key has been pressed. So if we want to change to check if an, if the space bar is pressed, it's the exact same thing. So we just need to add a case for it. And it's just called space. And that would be in the exact same place um, that I showed in the previous video when I was showing how to set up escape. It's all going to be in the uh, scan codes. It's going to be the same. And we'll break. So this one, we are going to be using that function here. So let's grab it. And we don't care about the return. Because it, if it fails, it, it's what's it going to do? Is it part of the color hasn't changed? It's not, um, it's not game breaking. So this one doesn't really matter if it, if it's doesn't work completely perfectly. It's more importantly when you're loading images and sounds and things like that. Okay, so we know right away that this is the alpha channel and this needs to be 255. So this is a um this is one byte. So so it's a it's um eight bits or one byte. So you can count between 0 and 255. So our, our numbers need to be between 0 and 255. 255 is completely turned on. So if I wanted a white background right here, let's just do this real quick. I can just hit them all, 255s. And we have the render because we're actually affecting the render. So we need to game dot render. That should be correct. Yeah. So what should happen here, if I've done this right, is that when I press the uh, space bar, the background is going to turn white and it's just going to stay white no matter how many times I press it because that's all we're doing. We're, we keep setting it to white. Now we need to change the name of this. So this is four colors and minus O is going to be the same. Okay. Okay, so press space bar and it's white. So that's pretty cool, but um, white's not really very interesting. So what I want to do is use the random number generator to actually just co completely make random colors. So we have the R channel, the uh, the sorry, the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. And 
we can just use a random number generator right here. Just replace these numbers with a with a rand call uh, for all three of these, and we can get a completely random number every time. Uh, so that is my that's my idea. The only problem with this is is the random number. Um, I'm not even sure the random number that we're going to get out of it. We do need to make sure it's between zero and two five five though. So what we will use is the modulus operator. Let's find it real quick. Yeah. So we can just replace one of these right here with rand, and then we're going to use the modulus operator, and we're going to use two five six. Not two five five, because we'll never get to two five six. We'll always be below two five six, which is two five five. So we'll always be between zero and two five five, which is what we want. So this is not inclusive here. Uh, we're never actually going to make it to two five six. And we can just do this on one of them. Let's see here, and we can just see real quick what that looks like. See how it's it's kind of always a light color because the other two channels are still set at 255, but it is changing the um, the red channel. Right, that the reason why it looks blue is because the blue is maxed out. Um, the green and the blue are always maxed out, but the red is what's changing. So let's do that to all of them. Let's change this to a six, rand, and we're not going to do it on the alpha channel. The alpha channel is the transparency. We're, we're going to leave that full, um, what do you call it, opaque, no transparency basically. Okay, so we got rand to 256, round 256, round 256. Now we're getting nice different colors every single time, completely different colors. Okay, let's just make sure colors is up here. Yep. Okay. So that was pretty quick, pretty simple thing. We're just changing the the render color, but uh, you can see now that if you're using a, a background like this, that you can you can set the background to different colors and have images on top of it. And you can also use this, uh, you know, you can also use colors for other things, obviously. But that's just a short one. Just uh, adding a uh, space bar. We made sure we added the break in there after that. Always want to do that so it doesn't fall through, but here it fall through to default anyway, but that, that's fine. Um, just a simple function there, setting up s uh, setting up rand and seeding it with the time. And let's see, add added. You know, it likes to add. The LSP likes to add stuff. It doesn't matter. Bool SDI to lib. Yeah, good. And we don't have any resources to delete, so that was an easy one, short one. Hope you enjoyed that. And we'll see you in the next one.